Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be working on just a really classic ring design. I'm excited to go kind of back to not really the basics, we're working with some really just amazing space age materials here. We've got grade five titanium, and then this is superconductor. This is what's used in particle accelerators, MRI machines, things like that. When you cool this down to a super cool temperature, you need to use like liquid nitrogen or things like that. It will conduct electricity at zero resistance, not like 0.001 resistance, but like zero resistance. It goes around in an infinite loop when you have it set up correctly, and it creates these really just interesting um, electromagnetic effects. Um, not really relevant for jewelry, but it looks amazing. I'm actually wearing a superconductor ring right now that I've been wearing on and off for the last three years. I love this ring. It looks so amazing. It's got this awesome pattern that right now it's a little bit muddied by the rough saw cut that it has. Um, but when we slice into this, I wanna polish off a piece and show it off to you. It's amazing. And then once we make it into the ring, it's gonna be really cool too. The ring profile, the shape, the design of it, it's gonna be a little bit uh, non-traditional. Normally with a ring design like this, you kind of do a standard superconductor on the outside and then the titanium on the inside, super simple. We're going to be kind of switching it up a little bit. I'm going to draw a sketch of the cross section of the ring and you can see what I'm talking about. Anyways, um, that's a rundown of the project. I'm super excited. Let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to need a smaller piece of superconductor to work with. So I'm going to take the whole rod over to my metal bandsaw and we're going to slice off a piece that's about eight millimeters wide. That'll give us the perfect amount to work with without wasting too much excess. Patience is definitely key when you're slicing off a piece of superconductor. Both the copper and titanium niobium are notoriously difficult to machine through. So you just got to go really slow, take your time, and eventually that saw will get all the way through. All right, we're ready to go ahead and move on to the next steps. But as promised, let's talk about the superconductor real quick. So this is what it looks like when it's fresh off the saw. As you can see, there's not much distinction between the materials, but once you sand it, check this out, boom. So much nicer, you can see a really clear distinction between the materials. The gray stuff, that's the superconductor itself. It's an alloy of titanium and niobium. And then the coppery colored stuff, that's just pure copper as you'd expect. That's what holds it all together. That's what gives it such a unique structure like the ring I'm wearing now. This is superconductor with rose gold on the inside. It looks so amazing, I love it, especially once it's etched. So, um, yeah, they make this in these rods and those filaments run all the way down along it. And it just makes the most awesome, unique jewelry pieces. I love working with it. So yeah, there's just a nice closer look at it. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the design. All right, so I've got my diagram drawn up here. This is the cross section of the ring. And what's different about this ring compared to what you normally see um, is the titanium. It's not just on the inside of the ring. It also comes up and is exposed on the edge here on the outside of the ring. And I think that's going to look really nice with the superconductor. They're gonna pair together really well. So the titanium, we're gonna keep that very simple. We're not doing anything fancy with this at all. Um, we're just gonna give it some nice, clean, sharp, crispy lines on there. It's gonna have a very professional look and it's gonna go really well with the superconductor that's gonna be a little bit more intricate, especially once we etch it and expose all of the different characteristics and the 3D depth that it has to it. So um, there's the design. Let's go ahead and get started machining. Now onto the titanium piece itself. And again, just like the superconductor, titanium, it's not easy to work with. It's not easy to machine. It has this issue where it'll work hard in if you're not using the right speeds and feeds and cutting materials. So I'm being very careful and selective with how I'm working with the material. And then my drill bits, I'm being very selective with that. The bits I use have a really high content of cobalt in them, which makes them very resilient, especially under high heat settings like this is. Now our ring is eight millimeters wide, which means this hole needs to be at least eight millimeters deep. I usually go well beyond that, I stopped at about 12 millimeters here.
the necessary dimensions are machined into the titanium, I'll go ahead and use a cutoff tool and remove it from the rest of the piece. Okay, next we'll go ahead and get started on profiling the titanium. To do that, I'm going to be using one of my Patrick Adair Supplies expanding ring mandrels and we'll get it mounted on the lathe. Now with the Sharpie and my calipers, I'll go ahead and scribe a line where I want to stop my cut. Now you'll notice from here on out with the ring, I'm being a lot more careful and a lot more precise. These first stages have just been rough cutting, but now the dimensions are really important. So you'll notice all of my cuts are a lot more shallow and I'm being a lot more careful with where I'm stopping them. All right, this thing's really starting to take shape. We're gonna go ahead and add a rough bevel onto the edge of the titanium. The bevel doesn't need to be perfectly even right here. I'm just trying to remove the bulk of the material here. Later on, I'll go in and fine tune that and make sure that it's really nice and even. And again, a few seconds with the file will ensure any of those sharp overhangs are completely removed. And here it is, our beautifully machined piece of titanium. I love getting rings to this point where they still have this really raw but accurate look to them. All right, now back to our superconductor piece. We need to get this ready to pair with the titanium. So I'm going to be repeating a lot of the same steps I did with the titanium first. I'll go ahead and cut out a hole using my drill bit. And then later on, I'm gonna be using my boring bar. We're gonna widen that out and get it ready to mate with the titanium. All right, there's the inner circumference as well as the outer edge completed. We'll go ahead and switch over again to our Patrick Adair Supplies ring mandrel. We'll go ahead and trim down the outside as well as finish off our remaining outer edge. You'll notice I'm using a lot of coolant. Cutting the superconductor generates a crazy amount of heat, so it's very important to keep it cool. If it gets too hot, you're gonna be going through lathe bits like crazy, and you can also ruin your material, so it's important to keep your temperatures down. Now there we go, it's still a very rough machining, but this is starting to look beautiful. I love Superconductor at this stage. All right, this is looking great. We've got both of the pieces roughly machined to their, their rough sizes. We're ready to go ahead and bond the two together. This is looking so good. I'm really excited, especially once we do the acid etch at the end, it's really gonna bring this ring to life. Now to adhere the two halves together, I'm going to be using my AstroTech CA adhesive. I wanna make sure to get really even coverage, that way we get a really secure bond. Next, I'll use a hand sander and I'll get rid of all of the excess superconductor. And you'll notice I keep dunking it in water, that's to keep it cool. From here on out, I'm going to make sure that the ring is cool enough that I can touch it at any moment. If we go much hotter than that, we could risk the chance of burning up the adhesive. Now back onto the lathe, I'm going to trim down the outer diameter. I want to get both of the materials perfectly flush into their final outer diameter. Now 
Now that I've carefully machined down the outer diameter, you'll notice the bevel has a bit of wobble to it. That means that it's uneven. So we need to fix that up. That's what I was hinting at earlier. So this is where I'm really taking my time and I'm honing in that edge and making sure that our bevel is perfectly even. Next, we'll do some rough sanding to the outer surface of the ring, but I need to be very careful to avoid that bevel because I can cause it to have a rounded edge, which will make it look a lot worse. Now, it's especially important to do a lot of sanding on superconductor. Due to the high amount of pressure exerted by that really sharp pointed tungsten carbide tip, you can get a streaking effect in the material, which will really ruin the look of the superconductor. But luckily, it's a really thin superficial surface effect. So by just doing a few minutes of rough sanding, we're able to completely eliminate that. Now we're ready to do some final sanding on the outer diameter. And you'll notice I'm backing my sandpaper with this metal one, two, three block. And again, that's to keep our bevels nice and crispy. We want this ring to have a really precise look to it. Now we'll go ahead and finish up the inside. And this is quite the tedious process. We need to do a good bit of rounding with our rough sandpaper on the Dremel. And this takes a long time. Titanium is a very wear resistant material. So you're kind of fighting with it to get that rounded profile put into it, but it's so worth it. A rounded comfort finish on a ring makes such a big difference. The ring's gonna be so much more comfortable and you're gonna to wanna to wear it every single day. Now that I've done the rough shaping to both sides of the ring, I'll go ahead and switch over to my sandpapers and we'll take this rough scratched up surface all the way up to a mirror polish. Now for polishing titanium, you wanna use a green rouge. It's specifically formulated to give you good results on titanium. A lot of other polishes will leave you with an orange peeling effect on the surface of the titanium that you really want to avoid. You wanna spend quite a bit of time here. We spent hours up until this point making this ring as perfect as possible. We don't wanna ruin it by having a lower quality finish at the end. All right, there's the inside polish. Now we'll go ahead and do a final polish to the outside and we're ready to move on to the etching step, which will really transform the ring and bring the final finished result to life. All right, I've got my three solutions prepared here. I've got muriatic acid on the middle. On your left, that's an industrial strength hydrogen peroxide that serves as a catalyst that'll really speed up the reaction. And then on the right, it's just baking soda and water. I'll use that to neutralize the acid when we're done. Okay, in goes the hydrogen peroxide and immediately you'll begin to notice the effects. There's gonna be a slight amount of bubbling coming off the copper on the ring and the solution itself is slowly gaining a yellowish greenish tint. And we're gonna pull it out before too much copper is removed. We don't wanna remove so much that we lose that contrast. Otherwise, the superconductor filaments aren't gonna stand out nearly as well. And wow, all of those hours spent machining and making this ring, being so careful all along the way, it really paid off. The titanium itself really kind of tones down the overall look of the ring, where that superconductor, it's crazy, it's wild, it's got those exposed filaments. But together, I think they just work perfectly. Also, check this out. We made another variant of the ring where we tilted the superconductor. It gives it a really different look. We're gonna have both of these available on the website. Also, again, I wanted to iterate, it's November, meaning our Black Friday sale is gonna be going on all month long. 
During this time specifically, we guarantee you that we will not have a better discount available at any other time during the year. So again, check out that link in the description. All the info you need will be over on the website. And if you're watching this video a few months later after we originally posted it, we're gonna put another discount code in there specifically for you guys, because I feel bad publicly announcing our Black Friday sale and then not having that available if you're watching it later. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. We'll catch you in the next one.